All right. How are you doing today? I just wanted to start the recording. So, okay. um, yeah. how's, how, how's everything going with, with, uh, uh, with your wholesaling journey or, uh, or anything like that? Well, I, right now things are going kind of slow. Okay. Right? Uh, I just started, I started learning wholesaling, um, February of last year. Okay. And so, um, so I guess you can say I'm still sort of at the beginning stages. Okay. Yeah. So, um, right now it's, it's kind of slow. Um, I'm trying to be more on the dispo side of things. Okay. So, and, so before we go too far into it, just tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are and how you got started and kind of go from there. Okay. Well, um, I'm Shonda <laughs> and, um, I'm, uh, born and raised Detroit, still live mm -hmm. in the city. Um, that's the market that I'm in now. Uh, years ago, I started in real estate. Um, a friend of mine got me started. Um, I helped a person save their home. So gotcha. I guess he, I guess was considered a sub two, I think at the, at the time I didn't know. Oh, okay. What I was doing, but, um, she, uh, worked for a mortgage company. Her friend owned a mortgage company. They worked together. They told me about this individual. So that's how I started in real estate. Always loved real estate. Um, and then I bought my own home. Okay. Then I um, went from there and started renting that house out, moved out and rented that house out. Um, and so that was my journey into real estate. Then went on, got a degree, <laughs> worked <laughs> career, you know, worked my career um, as a sign language interpreter for the deaf. Okay. And yeah, I love that. Um, love my career. Had a um, a serious car accident, you know, I was working as a sign language interpreter and I was still doing uh, real estate, but I was bird dogging at the time. Okay. Yeah. And so had the car accident, took mm -hmm. some years off because I had to, it was a lot of healing. I had to do a lot of doctor visits. Mm -hmm. And um, then I recently got started back in the real estate in um, February last year, 2022. Got it. And um, start, decided to learn wholesaling. Okay. And so here I am too. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. besides that first deal that you did where it was kind of like a sub two, was was that a wholesale deal or did you just help somebody out? I actually helped someone out. Okay. So, so you didn't really get anything from it. You just helped somebody out. No, actually I did. I got paid. I, I remember that check was $15,000. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. So I had no idea, Randy, what I was doing. A friend of mine knew I had good credit. She said, yeah. hey, you love real estate. You talk about buildings and things and yeah. wanting to build in. And so she just kind of pulled me in. So, And yeah. it's just about getting loud and, and, and letting people know about what you do. So you kind of got accidentally got your first deal with that. <laughs> so that, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. Um, yep. but Thank now you want to be methodical and you want to go through everything and try to do it the right way and say, ah, how did I do that again? <laughs> so, um, <Exactly>. yeah, <laughs> so no problem. So what we, so wholesaling, I've been doing wholesaling for a couple of years now. Okay. You know, um, two years going on, you know, I'm two to two and a half years or so. And, um, so I've been, I, I really haven't started recording my journey until recently. So with the YouTube channel, with the, uh, um, you know, with the Facebook group and all of that. So, uh, so that the good thing is, is that, you know, I'm here to help as many people as I can, um, who are just like yourself and, and want to go forward. 
everybody's like, well, what do you get out of it? You're not selling a course. So like, no, hopefully you'll JV with me on a deal. So that's where we, you know, that's where we make money together. So, um, and kind of go from there. Okay. So with that being said, um, what specific questions do you have? Um, I don't want to just throw everything at you all at once. I kind of want you to come What questions do you have at the moment? Hmm. Well, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I have been trying to piece things together because I'm learning okay. as I go from here. Okay. here. Um, I'm trying to find deals, uh, leads, get leads consistent. Yes. Um, yep. And then have a solid buyers list i have buyers and you know sometimes mm -hmm. they respond, sometimes they don't um yep. so i've been coming across that a lot that's that's improving that i'm starting mm -hmm. to get back from them more but okay. it's the finding the leads um, gotcha. and getting them coming in on a consistent basis so i can um dispel most definitely so the First, you got to find the lead. Okay. Then you have to be able to disc pull them. Okay. Right. Now, one thing I always recommend is when you're talking to these buyers, build relationships with them okay. and then start talking with them about what areas they're buying in, what their criteria is. And if, if you get enough of that information, now you can target those specific areas for their criteria. Okay. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, you got to get the deal first. Well, yes, that's one way of doing it. And I started out that way. So as well, but if you already have access to buyers, okay, why not listen to what they're saying? Right. Okay. So you say, okay, what areas are you, are you looking to purchase? What's your ideal scenario? Hmm. And you, what you do with that is you say, okay, um, I want to go in Ferndale, Hazel Park, Royal Oak, Warren. Then I ask them about Warren. Oh, you want South Warren? Do you want North Warren? What part? Because there's difference, hmm. you know, and you being from the Detroit area, you understand that. When you ask questions like that, buyers will will understand. You know the area. You know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're an expert. It just <laughs> means that you know that there's a difference between South Warren and North Warren. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you know the neighborhood's different. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, then you ask, okay, no, I if they're be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do Detroit proper. You know, Detroit proper. I'll I'll do that. Okay, what areas in Detroit? What zip codes? What neighborhoods? So on and so forth. Okay, are you looking for bricks? Are you looking? Do you care if there's a burnt up house right next to it? Do you care if there's a vacant house next to it? You know, mm -hmm. you do you want decent blocks? Do you not? You know, do you not care about that? Um, right. You know, things of that nature. And and then when you go and try to get these deals under contract, whether you cold call, whether you door knock, whether you text message, however you, there's multiple different marketing strategies out there. Okay. You can at least look at that. And there's even a marketing strategy of looking on Facebook and seeing the people that are out there. Okay. So like, for instance, if, you know, I had a deal, that and I'm just using this as reference. If I had a deal that, like, okay, I post up on Facebook, you make a comment and say, Hey, are you willing to JV if I bring you the buyer? Okay. Now you're just disponing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You bring the buyer, you get half half of the assignment fee or whatever you guys agree upon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you guys take it from there. Um, but you have to know when to recognize when it's a good deal and when it's not a good deal. You know? Yeah. I've been coming across a lot that um, they have a marked up so high. Yeah. 
and it's, yes. it's realistic and they get quite upset when you explain to them you know i don't mind explaining you know if i understand yeah. that it's not a good price for the property or the area um yeah. the comp you know it's just you know the house is forty thousand, but it's only worth 50 and it needs yeah 40 work so, you know. yeah so there's a lot of vir nothing against virtual wholesalers okay there's a lot of virtual wholesalers that don't know the market okay yeah. or they're working from six months ago comps yeah, yeah yeah okay um or they're they're pulling comps from a half mile away and in detroit you can't do that yeah okay mm -hmm. so it really does depend on what you know that individual now i'm not saying that they, you're going to find the leads off of there the best leads you're going to do is you're by you marketing to those leads yeah whether that be cold calling cold calling is is my favorite because that's how i started that's how that's what i'm doing okay, okay? um so you pull a list it's going to be more it's going to be you're going to be spending money on it but it's also less money than mailers mm. okay um you can text blast if you don't like to be on the phone use text messaging but there's a lot of rules with that and things like that so you you whatever strategy you do <clears throat> stick to one and do that okay okay don't jump around to all different places because then you're going to get confused on what you're doing and you're not going to be a you're not going to master that Okay. Okay. So concentrate on one lead source. Okay. The only one that I would recommend that you do at the same time is JV. If you come across a deal that your buyer, you, you listen to your buyer and your buyer says, I'll buy in Detroit 48221. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Bagley area mm -hmm. or Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but it has to be in moving condition or, or whatever. And we have to be so much under air, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay. And you see a deal that matches that criteria. Then you talk to the wholesaler and be like, Hey, I have a buyer that potentially is interested. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to JV and do 50 50 on the assignment fee, or do you need me to add my fee on top? Okay. Okay. If mm -hmm. you need me to add my fee on top, that's fine. Just, you know, and kind of go from there. What you do is you bring, you add your fee on top, bring it to your buyer, see what he says. If he comes at a lower price, just be open and honest with them. I don't like, doing the adding the fee on top or if i do i don't do a double assignment i say okay we'll just do a straight jv agreement and we'll spell it out in the jv agreement on who gets what okay okay that okay. way for the title company it's not really complicated okay you understand what i mean okay so um you know with that being said that's kind of you know, it's going from the beginning, you know, like you get, and, and I have no problem if you come across any deals or anything like that and you want me to analyze them, I have no problem helping you out and doing whatever I can to to see what we can do to get, get things closed. If you get a deal, say you cold call a deal and you need help talking to the seller. Okay. Okay. Um, I have no problem getting on the phone, talking with the seller as long as we JV with it, JV it together. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't steal deals from anybody because I go on an honor system and I, that's just not me. Okay. So if I get on the phone and I, I lock up the deal with you, we'll, we'll, we'll still JV the deal. I'll walk you through the whole process and okay. I, and you'll, you'll listen to me on the phone as well. And, uh, be able to see exactly how I handle things and how I handle their objections. Okay. And one thing to keep in mind is we are not here to convince anybody to sell their home. Mm -hmm. okay. We are here to give them options. Okay. 
We are here to say, if you'd like to sell or be interested in buying, okay? Um, right. If I'm not here to convince a seller to sell, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm here to say, okay, you're in a situation you wanna sell. I may give you four different offers. Okay. A creative finance offer, a all cash offer, um, you know, as well as a couple different other creative financing offers. Because with creative financing, it all depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Whether it be sub two or whether it be just a straight seller finance, whether it be a land contract or anything like that. Whatever fits their situation best. Okay. Okay. So, okay. and in order to do that, you've got to ask them the right questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't done much um, cold calling. I okay. have started off doing it. Then I try as the texting yeah. um, and then the mailers. So I was trying to, gotcha. and then I left all of that alone and just try JVN, finding mm -hmm. host of the contract and JVN with them. Gotcha. Yeah. Another, another thing you could try to do is if you talk with your buyers, okay and say, hey, what areas are you looking for? What areas are you interested? And ask them, do you care if it's on market or not? A lot of times they say, no, as long as it meets my price. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now some people do care. Mm -hmm. And they most of the time they do care, they wanna feel they still got a discount. So you can go to a on market that's been on market for 60, 90 days, and you give them a really low ball offer, something that would make it a, huge, a really good deal, and then take it to your buyer. Mm. Okay. And that's how you do on market. Okay. So, um, so essentially what I would recommend, you need to get more practice at figuring out whether it's a deal or not. And one thing that I would always recommend to people, if you're trying to get practice at that, look at on market deals okay. and analyze the crap out of them. No one said you have to put the offer in. Okay. Analyze them and, and see if it would be a good deal. If it's not a good deal at that price, see what price it would be a good deal at. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, the more you practice something repetition the easier it gets the better it gets okay okay, okay. yeah does it make sense yeah it makes a lot of sense um yes it does i awesome. guess because yeah you're right i need to more practice with analyzing seeing if it's a good deal or not right my confusion came in with i have a buyer i know their buy formula that yep. but it's not the same for all of them right so i guess i was basing the um if the property was a good deal or not i was basing it on what that buyer but they're all so different so i think yeah I so all of so that. essentially what i've done is, is i have multiple buyers as well and i think like okay I know his buy criteria is this. Yeah. I know the others is this. I need to get it below all of them. Yeah. Okay. That way I can feed the masses and see who can give me who would be interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can't and it comes up to here, well, now I just limited my buyer pool and I say, okay, then I give the, the seller options and I say, hey, you know, and I always tell them that I have different strategies and I work with other partners and things like that. So one of my go-to lines is this, is, hey, we have three different strategies. We don't know which one we're going to pick right away. Okay. And, and I, I know I'm just giving away the, <laughs> giving away everything right now, but this is what I say on the phone. And I say, if I, uh, I say we have three different strategies and i go one of them everybody knows what a fix and flip is okay so i start off with that you know we fix and flip properties 
Uh, then I go, you know, and then we also fix them up and then rent them out. Okay. Uh, so buy and hold. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And then I go, then sometimes what we do is if it's not right for me or, or whatever the case may be, I work with a ton of other investors that I may pass it along to, but rest assured, and I do it as quickly as possible. I go, rest assured, whatever me and you work out is exactly what you're going to get. Okay? okay. They pay me a finder's fee, not you or anything like that. And, and, uh, but keep in mind exactly what we put in our contract is exactly what you're going to get. Okay. Okay. They're like, oh, okay. As long as I get what, what we agree upon. Yeah. And at this point, when I say this, we haven't agreed upon anything yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then when it comes to a, like, for instance, say I'm at 60,000 and they really need 70,000 or they really need 65 or whatever the case may be. Well, I go back to them and I say, Hey, well, you know, remember that third strategy I told you about? They, that, that I work with a ton of other investors. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is what we can do. All right. I can try it out at, at marking out to my investors at the price that you're looking at at the 65. It's not right for me at that price, but I can try it out at that at that price for my other investors. And we can see whether, um, whether we get any feedback, at least we'll get feedback. Okay. And then now you're working with them. You're working on, on the side, you know, they know that you're going to be essentially wholesaling it mm -hmm. you, without using the word wholesaling. Okay. 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 So because sellers don't know what wholesaling is, unless they're in the real estate injury, they don't know what wholesaling is. Yeah. Okay. So you got to break things down. Mm -hmm. it's all about educating them okay. educate them on the market because they still think it's six months ago okay um educating them on the interest rate and educating them on hey this is you know um hey you know the house down the street from you literally sold for you know fifty thousand. you know and and that that was done to the nines you know or you know, that was rent ready or, or whatever the case may be. Okay. All right. You know, so, um, okay. You know, so kind of learning how to navigate something like that is it only comes with rep repetition and when you come across it. Okay. When I first, when I first got on the phone, it took me four months to get my first deal. Okay. <laughs> Man. Four months. Yeah. When I first got on the phone, you'd be on it. I was a wreck. Uh, uh, is, uh, 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 I had people cuss me out. I, I still had people cuss me out. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, it's, it's just the nature of the beast. I've had, because I was calling in Detroit, and obviously the way I talk, you can tell I'm a white guy. <laughs> okay. And I don't mean to bring race in it, but the 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 fact is is that the guy with the, the comment that the gentleman gave me, he said, I ain't selling this, you know, white boy. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. buying up all our neighborhoods and blah blah blah. And yeah. So what yeah. did I do? I followed up with him in a week and he was the nicest guy ever. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> I kid you not. Yep. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You can't take offense to it. You can't. You gotta have. You know. You gotta have thick skin. You have to. And, I've been cussed out in text and yep. <laughs> cussed out on the phone, hung up on. Yeah. So. Yeah. You have so to. it was it was a simple fact of dating and they they're maybe they had a bad day. And they dealt with something you'd never know. You yeah. catch them at the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, no problem. Hope you have a great day. Oh, yeah. I got cursed out uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. 
a seller. I gave him an offer from my buyer, and mm -hmm. well, that was that was yeah. So, and that's another Area. thing. That that's <laughs> another thing. Preparing when you lowball, preparing them before you give the offer. Okay. 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 I <laughs> so you, how you prepare them is say, hey, you know, you mentioned, hey, this is going to need a lot of work. I, I'm probably estimating it's probably going to need about 60 grand worth of work, whatever you think it is. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not making up numbers. No. Okay. It's, you know, whatever you think, I, I, I think it's going to need about 60 grand. Everybody thinks they can get things done for 10 grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, it's going to need about 60 grand. I think the after repair value, like I run through the numbers with them, yeah. you know, okay. and that way they understand when I say, you know, say ARV is at 80 grand, you know, um, it's going to need about 40 grand worth of work. I, I, you know, I, I can't really see this more than 20 grand, yeah. you know, and and they're like, well, what are you talking about? It's a house. It's this. It's that. I understand, you know, the, the block ain't that great. This is, you know, and you keep bringing up these things. you like, one thing I like about the house is it's a brick house. It's, you know, so on. So you bring some things back, but then you're like, okay. The after repair value is only 80 grand. And if I, it just doesn't make sense for me to put 40 grand into it. I'm all in at 60 after I buy it, pay closing costs and I try to sell it. I'm making nothing, yeah. maybe a couple grand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can't flip it. So I got to buy and hold it. Okay. So what are rentals over there? I still got to put the 40 grand into it. I'm all in my cash on cash return is probably only going to be like 8%. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in Detroit, I, I need to be at 18 to 20% for my cash on cash return for a buy and hold. So, so you it, walk them through the numbers, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Preparing them and educating them. It sounds like. Correct. Yep. Okay. Now, if they choose to hang up on you, great. Or whatever. They say no. Hey, that's no problem. Do you mind if I follow up with you in, in, in a couple of weeks or does that not make sense? Like, what do you, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, essentially you're, you're, you're showing them that, Hey, you are interested, but it has to be at that price. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. On average, it takes anywhere between 10 to 15 contacts a follow basically follow ups before you get a contract signed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You're not going to call somebody up and they're going to be like, yeah, I want to sell my house. Okay. Come over tomorrow. Okay. We'll sign the paperwork. Here you go. You, it will happen 1% of the time. Okay. 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 Now you may get it, get it signed contract over the phone or where you send them digital contract and, and based on number, well, then you go over there and you have to renegotiate. Okay. Thing, mm -hmm. Things of that nature. Some, that's some people's strategy. Okay. Um, right. Everyone's different on what they look at. Okay? okay. If you can get a proper description, if you can get a proper, like, then you can run your numbers, be as conservative as possible and go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. Well, this is quite helpful. <laughs> awesome. It is. I'm, I'm, I, I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. I was able to help for at yeah. least a little bit. So. <laughs> um, so so you got homework to do, and your homework is uh, to start analyzing deals to see what's a good deal. Okay. Okay. So w after you do that. Then you talk to your buyers and see their buy criteria. Some you already know. Right. So you can't forget to add in your fee into that buy criteria. Right. Whatever you want to make, whether it be 10,000, 5,000, 15,000, that's up to you. Okay. Okay.
Okay. So I usually bank in, try, I try to do 10,000. That's my goal because that way if I JV with somebody, I'm at least getting five. Okay. I see. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes I'm wrong in my numbers or I miss something and it's happened. It, it is, it's happened before where I missed a foundation crack while I was on a walkthrough. Okay. So I'm like, oh, that, 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 that's nothing. That's just a little settling crack or whatever. Now my buyer came and he's like, you know, that's a horizontal crack. That's, mm. oh, oh, you didn't see the wall bowing a little bit? Oh, mm. No, I missed that, you know? Mm-hmm. You make mistakes and yeah. things happen. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. Know? Mm-hmm. So as long as you're as transparent as possible, okay. No one's going to say that you didn't try to do your best. Okay. Okay. Now the seller may be, may be mad at you for not executing, but as long as you're transparent and say, Hey, you know, you know, those people I walk through, you know, my contract, they came back and it's going to be more like, I thought it was going to be 40 grand to do this. It's going to be more like a hundred grand because of this foundation issue, right. you know, or it came in 20 grand more than I thought. Mm-hmm. So, you know okay yeah let me ask you something if you don't mind um I, I, that's why we're here okay <laughs> oh um i have uh, a buyer interested in the bulk package uh, gotcha. like okay. 19 homes or something like that right like how many like 19 15 to 19 okay. this list and i know he's going to pick yeah. it so the wholesaler who has the contract, mm-hmm. we're going to JV 50-50. Gotcha. What point do you sign a JV agreement? Um, before, before you send out the assignment. They don't get any of my buyer's information right. until you sign that JV agreement. So you sign a JV, then send the assignment. Contract. And then send the assignment. Okay. Because okay. the thing is, is that now he can meet him with me when I'm there and so on and so forth, but he's not going to get his email or anything like that until I have control over that. That's your buyer. Okay. 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 You have control over that. Okay. All right. Now make sure that with this portfolio that they're willing to break up the portfolio break up piece by piece sell them off one by one they sometimes uh, yeah sometimes portfolio if they're selling a portfolio they they want to sell the whole thing or nothing right okay and a lot of times what happens if they do sell them individually even as a every portfolio that i've seen i'm Mm -hmm. gonna tell you they've been overpriced yeah okay yeah it, like they want they want retail value for each house mm, okay. even the rundown ones that need a lot of work i'm like that's yeah. not it's not gonna happen mm-hmm. you know so I'd be like hey you know i'm happy to take you know a b c and d at this price now you got to figure out you got to ask him, okay, what's the spread on that? Okay. Because you're splitting the assignment fee, right? So what does he have each house under contract for? Mm, okay. Does he have them on under contract or not? Or does he have the whole portfolio under contract? It means he has to write up a new contract for each, each individual house. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was another question I asked him. Um, I said, now, do you have a contract, an individual contract for each house? Yep. Contract for the portfolio. For the whole portfolio. And right. if he has to break that up, yes. it means he has to go back to the seller and get a price for the houses that you did, that you want. Okay. And get a new contract for that price. So you got to ask him, what's the spread on that? Because right. that's the only way you're making money. That's the only way you you know you're making money. 
Now, okay. a lot of people don't like to give that information out. Be like, hey, I need to know how much I'm making if I bring you your buyer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a buy. Now, I wouldn't ask them right off the bat until your buyer is interested and say, okay, and then your buyer gives them their offer. Okay. Mm -hmm. After your buyer gives you the offer and you say, hey, my buyer is interested at this price. If they take that, what is the spread? What would me and you make? I want to know how much I would make. Okay. What What's the assignment fee? Have, have you ever had someone send you properties with the asking price, mm -hmm. but they tell you, oh, I didn't add my fee onto it? No. I said, well, that's just my wholesale price. A wholesale price and asking price should be the same thing. Okay. Right. So, so a, wholesale, a wholesale price is the asking price. Yeah. Not under contract price. Mm -hmm. If he says, this is the price I have it under contract. And I say, okay, well, what are you asking for? Right. Right. So your fee is not, his fee is not added on. So let's say the house is 35,000. Right? right, it's not the time that particular house was a whole list of them. Yeah, so, so what I would what I would go back with them and say this. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what do you have it under contract for? The whole package because the no, no house, each individual house. He doesn't have a contract. He just has it. For that. Gotcha. So what I would do is do this: have your buyer come back with an offer, and say, "Hey." We need to, this is what my buyer would pay for these list of properties. Okay. Okay. You, you need to get that under that so that we can make some money. Okay. 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 Got you. Thank you. I was sitting here pulling my locks out, trying to figure out what to do with this situation. Some, sometimes you need to take control of the situation and you're dealing with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm saying that sometimes I'm not assuming that this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I'm just saying that that's usually how it works because everything's going to be revealed at the title company. Mm -hmm. He can't hide anything from you when on the HUD. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the contracts need to spell everything out. Okay. The so, JV agreement needs to spell everything out. So the JV agreement that he and I do, would yep. that, what on that JV agreement, because this I've done JVs in the past, and you just mm -hmm. I have address on there, the particular house we're, we're closing on. Yep. We're on now because it's multiple houses. Possibly my buyer will buy. Do I put all of those the 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 houses he may offer on, do I put? Um... So it depends on what's in the contract. If, yeah, if you're doing multiple contracts, then you do multiple. Multiple JVs? Yes. Okay. 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 If, you're, if you're doing, say, you're breaking up the package and you're like, okay, he wants 10. And that's how I would do it is if they want to do 10 different package or uh, 10 different properties for one package and have one contract, you can list all the properties on that one contract. On the one um, JV or the one assignment contract? So if on the purchase agreement, they list all like say 10 properties on one contract, then you do one JV agreement. Okay. So it all depends on what the contract says and what he gets the contract in. Okay. Now there's umpteen different ways to do these. That's just my recommendation. I got you. Okay. Okay. The reason why I do that is because I've got feedback from a title company that that's the easiest way for that. Okay. I want to make the title companies as easy as possible because I want to bring in more business. Right. Okay. So it doesn't look like 
it's like four different closings. Right. But we're closing on the four properties that's on this one. It's a portfolio, basically. It's a, it's a portfolio. It, it, you're closing on a portfolio. Okay. 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 They still have to run title for every single property. And keep in mind, 90% of the wholesale deals, they, uh, the buyer is paying all the closing costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least here. Okay. All right. Unless it's on market or something like that. But um, I always tell my buyers, just keep in mind that, you know, any of the title fees, basically you're paying both sides of closing costs. The only thing that they don't pay is they don't pay property taxes. Uh, that comes out of the thing that comes out of the seller's end is the property taxes, back ta yeah, back taxes and up to current taxes, mm -hmm. uh, the water bill, and any blight tickets from the city. Right. Yeah. So, okay. And I make sure I have that in my contract. So I also talk to whoever is got getting it under contract. I ask them, do you have this in your contract? Is the seller aware of this? Mm, okay. Okay. Because you don't want that being brought up at title. And now the buyer is like, well, I didn't, I, I didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times what they'll ask for, they may ask for a copy of the contract. Mine. <laughs> yeah. So I don't mind giving them a copy of the contract. What I do is I blank out the price. Mm. Okay. I block out, I block out the, the sale price. Mm. You can see everything else because that's exactly what you're agreeing to is the terms that's in that contract. Okay. I just block out the price until you, you sign that assignment. Right. I block out that price. Okay. Okay. So. And they, okay, they seem to be okay with that. Yeah, because they don't care about the price. You already told them about the like you guys already agreed on a price at that point. Okay. So by that point, you've already agreed on a price. Okay. Uh, they just need to make sure that what you said terms are in the contract are actually in the contract. Right. What they're agreeing to. Right. Okay. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Good information. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, that yeah. asked question. Okay, I appreciate that because um, I was thinking about how to handle that. You know, this situation I just asked you about the JD yep. multiple houses. So, um, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Clear. And do you have a con? Do you have a contract, uh, a purchase agreement, and assignment contract, and all that? I do have those. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, I have awesome. that. At the JV, sometime I have to, um, you know, um, change it up a little bit. Yep, I do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, but yeah, I do have uh, that, and um, yeah, I got that from a, a software system I bought from um, some time ago when I told you I first started learning wholesaling, and that came with the uh, different. Form. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Well, I do have to get going. Um, it was great talking to you, Shonda. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, actually, I'm going to that meeting that I sent you earlier today. So the meetup. The, 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 uh, the meetup. The M yep, the MREI. <laughs> yes. So yes. about wholesaling. Thursday then. It's once a month or is it every Thursday? It's once a month. Once a month. Okay. So next yep. next. All right. And and they, they have different topics. They have different topics every month. So. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, great. And then, um, you know, hopefully if you have any more questions, just let me know. Okay. Uh, we can get back on a, a, a session just like this. And I'm, I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions you have and, and walk you through any of the processes or anything like that. All right. I appreciate you. All right. Have a good day. All right. Peace. Bye.